<laughs> Where do we have, who do we have, Dina? <laughs> we have The Outsiders, Cynthia Arrivo. Yes. You know what? And if you don't know her from The Outsider, you know her from everything else. <laughs> Definitely know her. You know her from Broadway. You know her from the Harriet movie that just came out last year. She was nominated. Widows. Yeah, she was nominated for Oscars for that. Um, she is, and then she's also doing Aretha. <laughs> um, <laughs> With Nat Geo's Aretha, uh, genius Aretha, the Aretha Frank Franklin um, um, adaptation. So, at yeah, Netflix. yeah. Um, um, you know, and, but like, we for this episode, we do focus more on The Outsider because, you know, the it's, it's in a role that I've never seen her in. Like, it, it's something that I've never seen her. Uh, it's just a role that we haven't seen her in before. Yeah, it, she, it's, she, it's, she it's so interesting. Yeah. She plays this, she plays a detective. Um, very, on the spectrum. Yeah, um, she, it's a very nuanced performance and, it, and, it's, and it's Stephen King. So obviously it has the horror and the supernatural element to it. Um, Jason Bateman is also in it. It's, uh, it's, it's I, I mean, honestly, like it was like just, you know, I don't, I don't know if people know the premise or whatever, but they, they're finding this entity that kills children. <laughs> and that's all you need to know. <laughs> that's all you need to know that they're they're sort of on the hunt to to solve that this mystery. But it's really great, and we talk about like you know how she sort of tackled this role to 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 you know to show the nuance of this person. Um, she also you know we talked about uh, Aretha. We she gave us a little bit on that. Um, and you know she she she's just a dope person. She's doing dope things. I mean, well, also. I, I do regret the fact, you know, when we have like really talented guests who could sing, yeah, I try my hardest just not to say, hey, can you sing us something? I you know, know, I mean, that is so annoying, but I really <laughs> wanted her to no, sing something. <laughs> After hearing her hero rendition, like, yes, or yeah, it was like, I just love hearing that. But she she's amazing. If you haven't seen The Outsiders, it's on HBO. Yes. Uh, check it out and then also you can see her in um aretha later on coming up yeah this year this year i don't <laughs> yeah. know if they have an exact release date yet but do, yeah you could but yeah but without further ado here is cynthia hello everyone welcome to the deadlines new hollywood podcast this <laughs> episode we have the lovely the incomparable hey, hey, hey. Cynthia Rivo. Hey, hey, hey. How are you, hey, hey. Cynthia? I'm good. I'm good. Man. That was how are you doing, Cynthia? I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Thank you. Busy, but good. Yeah. Busy is yeah. good. And busy is busy a blessing is good, right, right now, very especially aware of like that. during yeah. these times. <laughs> So what have you been like, what have you been up to during this yeah. quarantine? Are you, are you taking this time to relax? I mean, you said you're busy. Are you working a lot um, still? Yeah. So um, when I first got, uh, when this first happened, I um, started recording. So my label was like, okay, so you're at home, you're not going anywhere, which is great because you're always going somewhere. Now you're in one place. We needed to record that album. Thank you. No excuses. <laughs> Excuses. So I've been like on and off recording um, the album and uh, I've had to do a lot of different recordings anyway. So I did the one for PBS for Memorial Day. I did something for American Idol. Um, I just finished recording something. I think there's a, a graduate thing happening. Uh, mm -hmm. Soon so I recorded something for that. Um, I've got a lot of scripts that I'm reading. Um, we have to still get ready for that because when we come back, Aretha is still happening. So the, that script is still coming and we're still learning about that. Um, and I've been on different interviews every single day and talking about different projects that we might start starting some projects. I think there's a, a project that I hasn't been announced yet, but it will be and I'll be producing, co-producing that. Uh, so we have to get into prep and they want to start filming now but like mm -hmm. uh in time so people will be doing it for themselves i hopefully um yeah and i'm looking forward to that so i'm it's busy it's i'm still working things out and figuring out what to do reading a lot yeah, yeah no you're definitely staying um, busy i have I'm to say i about. loved your rendition of hero mariah carey's hero <laughs> what what would you how would you describe the sound of your your album um uh, how do i describe my sound of my album i it's hard because I don't think there's a specific genre, even though I know that mm, mm, I love soul and I love R&B and I think that's just a part of who I am. But I think 
let's call it emotive. I call it emotive um, in that it is about emotions. It is about heart ache and, and love and, and all of those things and things that we express, you know, experience as human beings. Mm -hmm. That's what it's, that's what it's about. I write uh, mostly from experience. Um, so that's what you'll hear. You'll hear stories that I, so we're gonna we're gonna be in our feelings like like Drake. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> um, well, I just want to touch on your your background because you and I have similar backgrounds. We both we both grew up in Nigerian households. So I want to know your story about how you sort of made it to the industry. Like how how was what was that journey like for you? And how were your parent? How did your parents initially take it when you told them you went? This is what you wanted to do. See, uh, so I was raised um, by my mom, Solly, and she, I feel like she kind of knew before I did. Mm -hmm. She had this baby book, which I tell all the time because it's true. She has this baby book and she would write in the back of it. There's a little bit in the back that asks you what you think your child will be. And she writes, mm -hmm. first time she writes down about what she thinks I'm going to be, she writes down that she thinks I'm going to be a singer and an actress um, because she hums when she eats. Uh, and then, when, then the second time she writes it, I think this is what I was about two she writes that she thinks i'm going to be a singer and a doctor or an actress and a doctor because i started copying what she was doing she would come she was a nurse mm -hmm. and she would come back and she would write prescriptions and she would get everything sorted for work and she would have her uniform and all of that and i would copy what i was seeing um but i think that was actually probably the actor part of me going oh i want to play this um but she noticed all of that and and i guess she never pushed for me to do what i'm doing but she never she never discouraged, she always encouraged me to follow the thing that I wanted to do the most. Because I think she came from a place that uh, told her what she should be and she ended up doing what she wanted to, mm -hmm. to do. Uh, so I think she already had that sort of ethos anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so when I told her that I was gonna be an actress, I think she kind of was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And, she was for and. <laughs> I love that. And I love that. Like I'm seeing, I feel like there are more and more Nigerian families that are now like encouraging their kids to yeah. explore the arts if that's where they see their talents lie. So that's really, really yeah. cool. Who, who were your, who were your inspirations um, when you were coming up? Who were some people that you, that you looked up to? Um, a different, cause, because I sing and I act mm -hmm. and, and uh, there are different, there's like people who are like the combination of both of those things. Um, I was obsessed with Barbara Streisand. Um, I was obsessed with Judy Garland, obsessed with Aretha Franklin, obsessed with Dinah Ross, obsessed with, uh, I loved um, uh, uh, Viola Davis. When I, when I first saw her, I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> She's amazing. Because <laughs> I'd never seen anyone like her before. She was just, I thought that, you know, I, we all love Meryl Streep and I was like, I don't know, do we have, do we have someone that ha like can go toe to toe? And Viola Davis was that for me. I was like, mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. um, and Angela Davis uh, was just, she's just a hero. So, you know, I, Nina Simone is uh, because of the imperfection of, of the way she embraces music. It, Cause it, for her, it wasn't about making a pretty sound. It really was about, you know, communicating a message, communicating the 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 cause at the time, communicating how she felt, communicating how people felt as a as a nation. How I, she just had a wonderful way of using her music to do that. Um, and more and more, it became about freedom for her. And I just thought she was incredible. And then to know that her, you know, I didn't realize at the beginning when I first started to learn about her that uh, her love actually was. Um, being a concert pianist. She wanted to be a classical concert pianist. Um, and I don't know that she ever got to live that dream uh, out, but her piano playing is second to none. She's unbelievable. Um, and I don't know that people know her for that as well, but I think the, uh, the idea that someone can house that much talent like that is unbelievable. Yeah. That she spoke fluent French as well, <laughs> which is like... Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> what? How? Um, yeah, so th th I, I, I have loads of different um, influences and people I look, t look up to for very different reasons, but I think that they're all a combination. The combination of those people is kind of what I, um, yeah. Yeah, 
And and you so you bursted on the scene, I would say, on in I, Broadway. That's where yeah. People, yeah it's what and then obviously now you're doing film, you're doing TV, you're doing albums. How has this transition been from from being on the stage to now being in front of the camera a lot, or you know, how how's that been for you? Um, I so being on stage is really beautiful because you get to have this live element. You, there's no re-records you can't go back on yourself once it's if you make a mistake you make a mistake and you have to keep plowing forward and figuring out how to keep going and you get energy from the people there and then I used to say that when you're on stage your audience um will tell you what they need um and so when you're not and you're on screen you have to sort of trust that your director your castmates everyone around you even the people doing the lighting, the people doing the rigging, all of those people will give you something because they will, they'll give you feedback mm -hmm. by the way they behave or the thing that they might say, or they like that scene or that, what you did there is really great. You have amazing eyes. I love, like I'm putting, I'm going close to your eyes. So that means, okay, so something about what I'm doing with my eyes is giving you what you need for this storytelling. Great. I'm going to keep doing that. You know, it, it is um, a change and you have to get used to it. And I guess when it comes to music, there isn't much difference because I'm still being, I'm still able to perform live. I'm still able to be on stage and performing and, you know, recording an album is just something I want to do, but it, I don't, it's not taking me away from performing live. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I do live recordings anyway. So mm -hmm. there's that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you went from, you know, we mentioned the color purple, which by the way, I remember I was in New York and I couldn't get a ticket when you were performing. So I missed that boat. Um, <laughs> they should make a movie uh, version of, of that performance, of your performance. Cause I-, I That performance though, yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's my <laughs> issue. So you went from like the color purple and then you went to doing movies like Widows with Viola Davis, by, by the way, and yep. at times at the El Royale, which by the way, I think is underrated, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, I like that movie too. Like it's it. so fun. I um, love doing it. I like, honestly, I love doing it, yeah. And then, you know, you have Harriet and now you have The Outsider, yeah. but you know, these are very specific, and then Aretha coming up, these are yeah. very specific kind of roles very different diverse from each other but how did these roles speak to where you were or are in your career as an actor and as a performer i think the what i try to do with these these roles and i have an amazing team that and they understand what it is i'm trying to to do and that is to portray the lives of women that we just never really get to meet you know if you think about harriet harriet's story just hadn't really been told in full on a big screen until that movie. And you only really had, I think you had a TV movie with Cicely Tyson and you had that amazing version um, from Underground with um, Aisha Hines and then um, this movie version, it, but it just had never been done on the big screen and her story as a whole had not been done. So this, it's a hero whose story had just never been heard of, never been spoken about, never been given to people to, to pay attention to. Uh, Holly from The Outsider is such an anomaly, um, a woman who is on the spectrum, who is different, uh, is a, a woman of color, is in the police force, is as a, an investigator, is just all of these weird different things combined in one person. I had never seen anyone like that, so I knew that I wanted to play that and I felt like it was written in such a rounded, well-rounded way that I just, couldn't miss up the opportunity to play someone like that. Again, Darlene, who I guess was sort of slightly modeled after Darlene uh, Love, um, mm. who is one of the most incredible singers, but lived her life as a backing vocalist for the longest time. Uh, and it took her a really long time before she was in front and center. Um, and I don't know if you've seen this documentary, 20 Feet From Stardom. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. And I could watch it over and over. I think I've watched it at least four or five times at this point. Um, and her story is sort of the, the, the thing that runs all the way through it. And it, again, I'd never seen the story of the backing vocalist who was just trying trying to like make her way to the front, like just trying to make music um, and to be able to sing live on set um, in like in the middle of a horror film in the six, like the whole thing was just different. So I was like, I'm, I'd love to do that. The Outsider, um, I sorry, The Widows with Belle, who is this 
young, fiery, fit woman who is unabashedly doing whatever she can in order to make her life the way she wants it. And we're not judging her for it. She's not a bad person, nor is she particularly a good person. She just is. Mm. And I loved that. I loved that about that. And it, I didn't know that it would pop the way it did. I just loved how it was written. And so I, I guess the aim is to find these women who we don't get to meet very often, who we don't get to hear from very often uh, and tell their stories really. Um, because I think they're interesting stories to be told and um, we should know about them. Yeah. Mm. With, with um with the outsider you know Stephen King's story you know how familiar were you with that that story and you know when you first you know booked the role how did you want to approach it because you know she she is on spectrum she very she is this very unique character mm -hmm. and how did you even start to did it scare you how did you <laughs> wrap you your mind how around how this how do you unpack a character like that yeah uh, bit by bit so when I mm -hmm. I. I had not heard of her. I, you know, I didn't, I hadn't read a lot of Stephen King. Um, and when I knew that it was part of the Stephen King um, uh, trilogies or books, I just- Universe, decided, yeah. Universe, that's the word. Um, I just decided I wasn't gonna read her because I didn't want anything to influence how I played her. I really wanted her to feel fresh and new. Um, and when I had spoken to Jason Bateman about her, he was like, well, this is, the character we feel like he could be really cool she's very different if you're into it like this might be an interesting new woman to get your teeth into and and play she's different from anything you've done before but i think that you might be really cool for her and and i loved the opportunity to do something that was just new and different um the way i unpacked her was just by i was lucky enough to have a really good script and you read a when you read the script it's written in a particular rhythm there's like a rhythm she has in the way she speaks and so you break that down and you try and make sure that that rhythm is still connected and grounded as opposed to letting it um go go too far get too big um or go too small uh you sort of have to find the humanity in it because i think you know you read something like that and you think do i play her like she's a robot do i play her like she's like unable to like connect with anyone no what's interesting it's about trying to find the most interesting way of playing this woman. And for me, that was to find the humanity and ground her so that those things that were odd didn't feel, it's like you can't quite work out what, what is it about this person that is so different from everybody else, but still I can connect with her. Um, and she, but she finds it difficult to connect with everybody else, but is genuinely mm -hmm. the effort to do so. Um, and I just wanted to, I wanted people to, meet this woman who was on the spectrum who was uh human and who was just trying to m make it work like everybody else mm -hmm. um who happened to be a brilliant mind mm. um and that's sort of where i started if you start with empathy and no judgment you could probably find what you need to to play someone oh my God, that's like life lesson right. in general <laughs> yeah. do you often yeah, yeah. find commonalities with the people that you play Sometimes, sometimes not. And I, I always find it really interesting when I have nothing in common with them because I have to find myself like, Holly was like the opposite of me. She hates music, mm. can't stand heights, doesn't want to listen to one of, like, it's like, doesn't understand jokes, doesn't really know why people joke in the first place. Like she's just, she's very, very different to me. Doesn't do the, the whole style thing. It's like a button up and some chinos and some boots and I'm good to go. That's it for her. Um, it's sort of the opposite uh, of who I am, which I love because it meant that I could step outside of myself completely and into this person, sort of give Holly the space, which is me as a vessel to, to come forward and, and say hi to people really. Yeah. Did, you sort of forget about yourself and go and fall into the character. Yeah. Did anything about your performance of Holly and the outside, did anything surprise you or did anything that come, did anything come out that maybe you were like, Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that I had this in me. Um, I guess her, the way she would move. Mm. I don't know that I planned it that way. She just, she has a way that she moves. She has a way that she walks. She has a way that she um, uh, addresses people. There's this this weird thing that I, I watched the first episode uh, when she, again, when, when you first introduced to her, episode three, and she starts explaining um, what she's like and why and what she's been through and uh, what she can do. And before she explains that, it's uh, she asks. He's 
Ben Mendelssohn's character, Ralph, says, uh, if, you said if. And she, I, I don't remember doing this, but when I watched it back, um, Holly does this. Hmm? And I, like, I don't remember these little quirks that she would do, the moving the finger off the, the like taking a finger, the, the ring off and putting it back on and twisting it around. Those, those little tiny quirks, you don't know that they're happening until they happen. It's, you, it's sort of a pattern that you find for these people. They're, it's the rhythm that they, they have in them. Um, I didn't know that that was in me. Uh, my uh, hairstylist had a videotape of me, I say videotape, like I'm definitely a 90s kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he recorded me as I was walking across the set. I had no idea he was recording me. I was just walking somewhere. I don't know where I was going, but I looked like I was on a mission. But, and when he played it back to me, I was like, I don't know who that is, but it's not wow. me because that's not my walk. Oh, wow. He was like, I know that's not you because it, you would come into this trailer and do your makeup and it would not be Cynthia. It would be Holly. The rhythm that you would speak in, the tone that you would speak in, the way you would move, that was not you. And I'd be like, this is so, it's so strange because you don't know what's happening. You don't know that that's what's taking over, but it's sort of like, I guess when you give a character enough room, they just sort of yeah. do what they do and exist how they need to exist. Yeah. New Hollywood is presented by the Apple TV Plus original series, The Morning Show. The drama series explores the cutthroat world of morning news and the lives of the people who help America wake up in the morning, told through the lens of two complicated women working to navigate the minefield of high-octane jobs while facing crises in both their personal and professional lives. The Morning Show is an unapologetically candid drama that looks at the power dynamics between women and men and women and women in the workplace. The Morning Show stars Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, Steve Carell, Billy Crudup, Gugu Mbatha-Ra, and Mark Duplass for your Emmy consideration. With characters like Holly, you know, she is on the spectrum and we are in this time of, you know, representation and the, the uh, you know, mental health disabilities, these, these are the, uh, this community that has been, uh, haven't been portrayed in the longest time. Yeah. How, you know, I'm sure you had, you know, advisors and, 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 and they were very responsible with the portrayal, but how did you want to give, I, I don't know, saying give justice or, you know, to this portrayal of someone who is on the spectrum um, and how careful and how did you just even navigate that? Yeah, I, I had realized that people on the spectrum are often portrayed on TV as though they're not human. It's like they're, it, 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 sometimes it always just goes too far. And so you can't, and, and as if they don't connect at all with people. Uh, um, and not, not every one of the people on the spectrum are savants. Like some of them are just working out how to connect. There's just, a difficulty in connection and that we we as human beings can understand and the thing i wanted to do was make sure that we when people watched this they could understand that someone on the spectrum isn't someone that you should outcast yeah. or someone on the spectrum isn't someone that you can't communicate with and you can't have a conversation with that people on the spectrum can fall in love can um ha wear braids can uh, have nails can be great can be brilliant minded can have conversations that are difficult it just takes them a second to to connect the dots sometimes and sometimes it just they work faster than people but it doesn't mean that they should be outcast mm. that doesn't make sense to me and what i and i just was trying to make sure that there was a really good balance of her brilliance and humanity all in one place um that was the thing that i really wanted to make sure was happening mm. um and I can't tell you how many people reached out to say, thank you for doing that. Yeah. I have a son who's on the spectrum. I have a daughter who's on the spectrum. I'm on the spectrum. And I, watching this felt like finally someone had seen me. Finally someone had um, given a representation of something that I understand as what I represent. And I, that just meant a lot to yeah. me. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like what I've learned, uh, especially with speaking, you know, with uh, people who are in the space of disabilities and mental health is that we, yeah, I think for so long, Hollywood has looked at people with disabilities as different or like portraying them in a certain way, but yeah. they just, they're the same as us. They just do things differently. differently. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And I think that's the same for Holly. She just, 
she processes in a different way. She comes at things from a completely different way. But, and if she didn't, she wouldn't be as brilliant as she was. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. processing and, and getting things done in, in a different way doesn't mean that you are not part of the wider community of human beings. Right. Like that's yeah. just, it, I don't believe that at all. We're, we're all human beings at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, and everybody has different everything. So, yeah. um, yeah. So I was at the T I was at TCA when they did, they showed the clip of, from the upcoming season of Urethra. And I'm so, so, so excited for that, I, for that um, season. What can you tell us about it? I know you got, you said you're still, you guys were shut down because of the, yeah. the so you're still filming. Eight episodes and we shut down on episode six. Okay. So what, what can you tell us so far about it? I'm, I'm so, I love Aretha. I'm a huge reason. Like, what can you tell us about it? <laughs> um, I'll tell you that I am singing live on set. Uh, every song I have sung live, um, I can say tell you that we are trying to unpack uh, the complexity of her. She's she was a complex human being, um, and there are moments where it's not cradle to grave. We're talking uh, from the early, like late forties. There's a young Aretha, and we when you meet me in the sixties. Uh, and you go through with me to the 90s, early 90s. Um, and, you know, it's just about her relationships and who she was and how she made her music and how it came to her. Um, the fact that she uh, was about equal rights, that she uh, was about the Black Power movement and she was trying to make sure that there was equality for people of color uh, and that uh, it meant that meant a lot to her. I think people don't realize that she was an activist in her way um, and that she had a complex life and she worked through a lot of things to get to where she was. And I don't know that people really understand that about her. We see Aretha, the woman who made beautiful music and was super successful, but she had to work through a lot to to get to that point. Um, Yeah. You get to see how she handles all of those things. So all of the difficult things that we uh, as human beings and as women struggle with sometimes. Do you, do you ever get nervous or feel sort of, I guess, a pressure to portray characters that are already sort of known to people like a Holly, he, she, she was in the book, Rita Franklin obviously is an icon. Do you get nervous about, about portraying these pe- type of people? Um, not necessarily nervous. I do feel a responsibility to try and do it as truthfully and as fully as I possibly can. Um, I know that I, I can't be the person because the person already exists but I know that I can put my best foot forward and do as much as I possibly can to, to make this person and do this person justice. Mm. Is that what I try to do at least. With a Holly, I, I saw her as a fresh new person. I just, I hadn't met her yet before. Mm. I hadn't met her in the book. I hadn't seen her in the, I think there was a series that had gone before. I hadn't seen that character. I hadn't seen that woman play her. Um, so I, it felt like I was getting a chance to do something completely new and original. And that's how I came at it because it, that helped it helped free it up for me to, to do what I needed to do. But for um, Harriet and for Aretha, you do as much research as you possibly can. You read as much as you possibly can. You listen to as much as you possibly can. You look at as much as you possibly can. And then you kind of let it go and then do your best mm. is basically what it is, yeah. What would you say your favorite Aretha song is? Ain't no way. Oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sing that. That one. was quick. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what, what, uh, other than Aretha that's coming, it's coming out, it's coming out this year, right? I'm, I'm spacing on the date. Yeah. 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 What, and other than that, what else do you have coming up that you can talk about? Or if you can't talk about anything, is there something that you've been really wanting to do that you haven't tried yet? Any role that you've been wanting to take that you haven't done yet? I really want to like step into the world of like fantasy and uh, cause I haven't done that yet. And I would love to, I'd love to do some Marvel. I'd love to do some whatever, like there's a really beautiful book, Children of Blood and Bone coming. I would mm-hmm. love to be a part of that. Um, cause I'm obsessed with that book and, and Tommy Ayemi is amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, and like, I really, I just want to keep playing cool roles. I'd love to be in a film with Meryl Streep, uh, because that would be fun. Uh, mm, and I would happen. pack up a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, there are some things that I've got, uh, coming up, but we're sort of like deciding when they go, well, there's a, a film that we're working out at the moment and doing the contract for, mm-hmm. and hopefully I can get into producing myself at some point very soon. Good. That might be on the horizon. Do you have any oh plans to tour or do Broadway or anything like that? With your, well, with your album, is there a tour coming up or are you going to, can we see you back? Are we going to ever see you back on Broadway? 
you might see me back on Broadway. I just have to find the right thing for myself. I have to be like I want a piece to feel as meaty as the color purple. It, I was mm. spoiled. I ruined myself by doing the color purple. As the first I, did. I really did yeah. because it messed it up for my expectation of what I'm going to do next. Like if it doesn't like feel as fulfilling as that, then there's no point because it's like going backwards and I don't want to do that. Um, so if I find something that feels right for me, I'll, I'll do that. And with the music, if it gets ready and it feels right, then yeah, I'll, of course I'll tour it. Yeah, I love seeing it live. So that's well, definitely- I'm all, I'm all for seeing you in something Marvel, <laughs> DC, fantasy, sci-fi, come through it. Black Panther 2. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes. Put it out there. We're all about manifestation. Send it out. Send that <laughs> yeah, out. We're, we're, you know, it's like- Give it to the world, yes. Yeah. Seeing you with Meryl would be a, a dream as well. And I remember what, during Widows when you were, um, you would post your workout videos on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I was like, and I would be on my couch eating cheese puffs or something. I'd be like, oh, look. <laughs> I'm like, look, Cynthia's working out for all of us. <laughs> Wait, are you, are, you do, are you still working out like that? Are you doing? I, I took a break, okay. but uh, I'm back at it. So yeah. Mm, still that, th that, th your workout, yeah. Michael, you are, it's it's like, it was you and The Rock. Those are the two. <laughs> Like, I love that is great. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> do we do that? Do we do me and the rock at some point? Yes. Do do oh my god! I should put out a workout oh. video. <laughs> you and the rock. It was a I workout mean, or like a workout video followed by a buddy comedy. <laughs> yes, yeah. that would actually be that. You know, you know has all the ideas right now. Okay, we're throwing everything out. So like, <laughs> we're you know what we make things happen at deadline. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna make this happen, guys. Good. Love that. <laughs>
It's bad. It likes bad. It's bad. <laughs> I love it. Because I usually just have one bottle of cologne that just lasts me for like five years. <laughs> I'm yeah. terrible. Okay. I'm terrible. <laughs> okay. I have like, and I never like, I, I've never just used one scent for myself which is kind of fun because like when I get to these characters, I'm never, I'm never attached to a scent. I'm sort of like, I just use it as I go. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so fascinating. Uh, okay. So would you rather have chapped lips that never heal or terrible dandruff that never come, that, that never, that can never be treated? <laughs> what? Who? <laughs> this That's is me. a hard, I, a hard I, one. No. It's a hard I mean, one. That's a hard one. Ooh. <laughs> this is kind of gross. I was thinking about this too. Right. Like, if I had the chap lips that never heal, would I be able to like remedy the immediate situation in the day? Because then I could just put like lip balm on. I guess See, that, 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 that's the question. You know, <laughs> like, a t like, a, like a temporary. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. <laughs> then, I would have, then I'd rather have the chap lips that never heal. Because if I can allow, at least have it, uh, like a temporary fix. Yeah, yeah. Can you that. can always put on like lipstick with, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. with the dandruff, I think <laughs> no, I you, you don't. That, you don't have to wear black. Whole can of things. You can't wear black. You can't wear. It's too, mm -mm, no, because yeah, it's not yeah. just the dandruff, is it? It's it's not just the dandruff. Right. It's the clothes. It's the having to wash the clothes exactly. with the like, dandruff and the having to figure that out. And like, no, that's or people commenting <laughs> or people commenting, is it snowing outside? <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> That's You're too right. much. <laughs> At least with chat books, people feel bad for you. Like, hey, do you want some lip Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay. So an, an, an evil wizard cast a spell on you. <laughs> and she only allows you to sing one song for the rest of your life. Okay. So what song would that be and why? Um, you know what? I'm going to go to I'm here. And you know why? Because I know that it has brought a lot of people a lot of happiness mm -hmm. and I keep being asked to sing it. And it, for some reason, cracks people open uh, in a way that I didn't truly understand at the beginning of it. But then watching, singing that song for 14 months and watching people change because of that song and um, realize dreams because of that song and be stronger because of that song meant a lot so i if i could sing only one song it would be i'm here because i know that it would have a great reaction like it would have a great um effect on people yeah oh my god that's such a good answer and good, such a selfless one too i love it <laughs> yeah. okay if you could make a 20 second phone call to yourself at any point in your life present or future when would you call and what would you say i would call um, I probably would have called myself at, maybe, was I 23? I think it was 23 and I was on my Brompton bike riding to, uh, like a temp job or something. And I would have called her and I would have said, you're doing fine. I'm going. You're gonna be okay. Yeah, definitely. Aww. <laughs> That's a good question. Because <laughs> twenty <laughs> seconds is not a lot of time. I think I would call my time. and be like, I would be like, girl. So how did we end up? All right, cool. <laughs> 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 But I think, but that's such a good answer. Is this like a calling your past self, yeah. especially with people who have been historically marginalized or just yeah. kind of bullied or whatever, yeah. to say you're gonna be okay. I mean, it sucks now. Yeah, but you're gonna have a glow up later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I like I often I often get asked, "What would you if you could change anything about your past? What would it be?" And I'm always like, "I wouldn't change anything because I I think if I did change anything, it, I probably wouldn't be here. Like it, everything I have done has led me to where I am right now. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't change this for the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. And our final question, we ask this to all our guests, is there an underrepresented voice in the industry, whether it's an actor, writer, producer, creator, that's not in the mainstream that you want to give shine to, give love to, and you think deserves more recognition than they're getting? And you could give us multiple people too. Okay. Um, underrepresented. Oh, who do I pick? Mm -hmm. um, Jeremy Pope, who is just, who's just. He um, was on our podcast. Love. love yeah, he was so, oh God. He's so dreamy. <laughs> he's, 
And Dreamy is a person and has been working really, really hard. Um, so I want to see loads more from him. Um, who else? Uh, I want to see Danielle Brooks in some really great movies. Um, she, I love her and she's my good, good friend. And I think she's incredible. Um, I would love to see, I want to see more from Dewanda. Mm -hmm. um, there's Again, a, she was on her podcast too. Amazing. <laughs> love her. Um, I spoke to a writer called Wanuri. She wrote Rafiki. Um, I want to see lots more from her because I think she's incredible. Um, Unrepresented. Um, there is a, there's a, a singer called Michael Kiwanuka. He wrote the song for um, uh, Big Little Lies. That the theme tune is his. Oh yeah, he's wonderful. And Salt of the Earth. There's an English singer called Talia who is beautiful. Mm. Her music is incredible. I want to see more from her. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot. <laughs> lot <laughs> a lot, you know. Um, my producer, he, uh, who's I, I accosted and told him he was going to help me make my album. His name's Will Wells. Mm. He just makes great music and it is a genius and is brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, great yeah. names. Those are great names. Yeah. Those are great names. <laughs> I mean, we, we just love it when people help you know, lift each other yeah, up. Here that's on what, that's deadlines in the hall. Past, so. yeah. <laughs> well, since, thank you so much for being with us today. You a great conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully on the other side of this, we could see each other yeah. again. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, and, I'm sure uh, we will. I'm sure we will. Thank you so much. You. Have a good one. Yeah. And I love this, this yeah. and that you're sitting on here with the, the like a chaise or something with the, with the. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, Amanda's oh. Amanda's background is always so <laughs> my, 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 my really dramatic chair room right now. So I don't. I'm at I'm at home. So there's not that many rooms to go to here. I don't know if you guys heard a baby yeah. crying. There's a lot of noise in this house. I, yeah, I heard it. Okay. No, I, no. Yeah, yeah. My 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 brother had a has a three month old, and he just started going crazy. Wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of noise, like dogs barking, people coming in and out. So this is probably the only mm. place I can get quiet. Yeah. It adds to the ambiance of, yeah. the, uh, of I, the podcast. But I would rather so have a background like yours, Cynthia. I mean, that's really, really <laughs> smart. <laughs> I I know. Up. So like this is like great. This yeah, makes, this and it's and I love the fact I love the fact that it's a little doggy looking through it's a cute. telescope. <laughs> Isn't it cute? It's so funny because this dog is looks a little bit like my actual dog. So He's cute. white with like brown spots. That's a little dog with white and brown spots. Let me see. I don't know if you can. The dog. <laughs> <laughs> we could see the little doggy. We're gonna go. Oh my god. We're gonna look. Oh, your doggy's down there. Can you see it? No, my dog is outside. Oh, I was going to say, your dog is so quiet. He has a bell on. <laughs> like, I put a bell on his collar because the last time we, he got lost. Oh, he out. His, the problem is he's really intelligent. So finds ways to get out. Mm -hmm. And you're like, how yeah. did you do this? Everything is closed. And now I need a bell on him. So yeah. I know exactly. My dog does that too. We had to put, we had to give it, put him, uh, give him a collar with their name, our address and number because he'll find ways yeah. to run out. But the thing is he always, he always comes back, but sometimes it's like, it's a long time and he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't watch out for traffic. He just kind of runs. Yeah. So oh, <laughs> that's, no. scary. That is that's not stressful. Scary. It's very stressful. So when he's gone, like we usually chase him because it's like, he's not, he's not conscious of like people, you know, there's cars that are coming and that can, yeah. that can hit you. But my little dog is hilarious. <laughs> we live on a hill I like I'm on a hill right now and so in trust him to choose the most difficult way to walk up the hill he goes up the <laughs> hill. Wait, how, how old is your your, your little doggy oh, okay Two, yeah eight pounds. Here's a small little doggy with very short legs probably a lot of energy <laughs> a neighbor calls Usually like uh, I think I have your dog can I mm -hmm. do you want to <laughs> Yes, I can get my dog. Usually, <laughs> usually the do the younger dogs also have the most attitude. Like they're like, I don't need you. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. They think that, especially small dogs, they think that they're bigger than what they are. <laughs> so, yeah. so my dog's always barking at people, but then he'll like run away. <laughs> like, I think it's so dog. like if, what, if people sometimes if people want to pick him up, he'll do a little growl, and they're like, Oh, is that okay? I'm like, the growl literally means nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So, be easy when you pick me exactly. up. I'm tender, please. Yeah. And then he stops growling. Yeah. Like it exactly. does not even growl. He sounds like a pigeon. <laughs> but.
Oh, okay. Well, Cynthia, <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much. We're looking forward to Aretha. Thank We're you. looking forward to Aretha, your role in Black Panther 2. And, <laughs> and Blood and Bones. Role, <laughs> and Blood and Bone. And, and, and maybe yes. in the next Matrix movie. Yes. You know, who knows? Well, I'm not going to throw it out the window. I love that. <laughs> well, thank you again. Thank you. Thank Take, you. Care. Okay. Take, Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.